Can I ask you to tell us something about the, the movement for, for women's suffrage in the, in the late 19th or into the early 20th century? Who was involved? How extensive was it? How broad a spectrum of politically did it, did it, did it encompass? What was, what was happening at that particular period? Well, the, the, the movement for votes for women in Ireland really starts in the 1870s and in fact in the north before Dublin. So you have the Ulster Scott, um, Isabella Todd sets up the North of Ireland Women's Suffrage Society and in fact in 1873 she does a, a suffrage tour of many of the northern towns, Bangor, Carrickfergus, Belfast obviously, comes down to Dublin and she really, I think, inspires Anne and Thomas Haslam, the Quaker couple, who then set up the Dublin uh, Women's Suffrage Society. It later becomes better known as the Irish Women's Suffrage and Local Government Association as women become more involved in poor law guardians, local government. So from the beginning, it has a, a unionist um, slant to it, if you like, in terms of the membership, because they're, they're looking at the union of, of Ireland and Britain, they're looking at Westminster in terms of legislative change, and they have very close links with women um, in London, for example, Millicent Fawcett. Um, Isabella Todd herself was um, spoke on unionist platforms against home rule. Uh, unusual, she was a strong woman, but they were also campaigners for women's education, um, temperance, social reform. And in the 1880s, um, the Haslams actually devote a lot of their attention to fighting the Contagious Diseases Act, which had been introduced um, to prevent the, the spread of venereal disease, where women were compulsorily um, brought in for um, internal examination. And that was a big feminist campaign in Britain, but also in Ireland. So they, they, they if you like, were parallel to another very important movement in the 1880s, which is the Land War and the Ladies' Land League. But they don't overlap. Um, one is um, kind of feminist and unionist, and the other is feminist and nationalist. And if you, if you read, say, for example, the English Women's Review, which talks about the contagious disease campaign, talks about um, the work of the Haslams, and Isabella Todd is very well known in England, uh, it also supports the landladies who are fighting against the Land League and the Land War. So it supports the landed classes uh, at that time. So it's a quite complicated situation. Uh, you, you mentioned women's participation as, as poor law guardians, uh, w w which I suppose maybe is the first, in, with, with a small p, political yes. opportunity that was available for women. And I, but I suppose it focused very much on, on, on issues of social concern. So there was a growing recognition that there was certainly a role for women in, in these kind of areas. Is that Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And Anna Haslam is really important on that. I think she'd gone over to England and it had a look at some of the um, uh, institutions there and also started to look at the kinds of work that women were doing because you know Ireland is always a bit behind in terms of legislative reform and she presses very much for women to be poor law guardians the fact that women would bring maybe a better uh, social and moral sensibility to a lot of the issues related particularly to to women and children mm. within the institutions and so women become poor law guardians and then gradually local government starts opening out um, so in 1898 you have women in the county count uh, not in the county count councils but in the district councils so gradually women mm. start um, making a contribution to public life in Ireland what was the nature of, of, of their campaigning at that stage? I mean, the later suffragette movement became quite militant, um, but at that stage, how were they pursuing their campaign? What kind of activities were they being involved in? What was the focus of their attention? The, the Irish movement was very similar to the British movement. They were comprised of middle-class people. Now, they weren't all unionist by any stretch of the imagination in Ireland uh, as the suffrage movement develops. Many of the later militants were part of the Irish Women's Suffrage and Local Government Association. So you had women like, for example, Jenny Wise Power, who had been in the Ladies' Land League before that. She was a member and she was also a member of Anini Naheran. 
later mm. militants like Hannah G. Skeffington joined that. But how they campaigned was mainly meeting politicians, raising the issues, um, contributing to the petitions that went regularly to, to Parliament, having drawing room meetings. It was very genteel, mm. if you like. And one of the um, reasons why the younger generation then, as they said, were in a hurry for reform and set up other groups was that they felt that they weren't making sufficient impression on the Irish population as a whole. People didn't really know about what they were doing. Mm. Um, the focus was very much on trying to persuade politicians to um, mm. change the law rather than to really encourage public opinion to put pressure on politicians.